All right, guys, what's going on? So as you know, there's something going on with this car right here. Let's figure it out. So we ran into some issues on the dyno, as I explained in the last uh, video. We had some white smoke coming out of the exhaust in boost. Um, but right now I'm smelling a little bit of coolant. So I don't know what it is. It could be oil, could be coolant. Not exactly sure. Um, but I have a ton of parts between these two boxes that I'll get into very shortly. Um, but I'm not exactly sure what today's video is going to entitle, um, what we're going to do, but I have a lot of parts, so let's get into it. Okay, so in this box is all the miscellaneous stuff. That's something special I'm going to save for later. This is going to be... I'll get to that later. <laughs> That's going to spoil what's in that box. Um, so here I have some stuff from Radium Engineering. Uh, we're going to be rebuilding the fuel system. We're going to do a custom Venturi setup. As you see, we have a duck bill and the Venturi. Um, along with that, I have... Get this out of the way. This is a uh, battery location kit. Uh, as you can see, I have 30 feet of AN... Um, I believe this is AN6 line. Um, a whole bunch of AN fittings. I got a fuel filter. Battery wire for the relocation kit. Um, this is going to be my AN wrench to install the fittings. This is... Let's see. Fuel filter holder and some more fittings. We got... Uh, another fitting here we have some PTFE fuel line for um, the uh, fuel basket assembly that we're going to modify um, this is E85 rated as well as this one right here uh, we got a couple fuel pump relays because I know mine is possibly bad in here we have uh, this is our fuel pressure regulator system. I don't know why it came with gloves, but okay. Uh, and in here we have a whole bunch of, you know, um, shark bite clamps. And I believe this is, ooh, I guess that kind of spoils it. But here we have a three inch V-band clamp. And in this box from earlier, as you can see, AN oil feed and drain line kit. Now you may be asking why does he need a V-band clamp and oil lines and oil drain lines? Well, in this box right here, as you guys can see, we have a new Garrett. Ah, big boy. Holy crap, this thing's big. So this right here is a Garrett 6262. I'm struggling. As you guys can see, this thing's just about the size of my head, if not bigger. Um, so on the back, we have a three inch V-band, your standard T3 mount, um, and a big spoolie boy right there. So do I think this will fit right there? Probably not, but we're gonna try. Um, this AGP turbo uh, that Tim sent me is a 5757 uh, with a 0.83 AR housing um, on his Exceladine um, cast iron manifold, which we're going to try to reuse. Um, hopefully we don't have to buy a new manifold to fit this turbo, but it is pretty big. And even that one right there, as you can see over there, is getting kind of close to the block. Uh, and we have all these lines that are just in the way. So, as you guys can see, we got a lot of stuff to work on. We got turbo stuff. We got battery location stuff. We have fuel stuff. So, not exactly sure what we're gonna start off with, but I don't wanna start with the turbo, to be honest with you. Um, I know fueling is my biggest issue just because if you look over here, this is the, this is the fuse for my fuel pump relay and it is completely burnt and missing its end. Um, so technically we have no fuel, 
Uh, even though right now I do have the... Jesus, do you have to be mowing your lawn right now? Um, but yeah, as you guys may know, I have the car hardwired to the fuel pump right now. So it can technically turn on and run, which I did just run it. Um, just to confirm the color of the smoke, but I couldn't get it to smoke um, even when revving it. So I don't know if it's something coolant related or something oil related coming out of the exhaust um, that's making that smoke on the dyno. But let's hop into it. Well guys, I took off the uh, boost pipe and I did notice some oil residual here that's kind of wet. I will focus on my finger, but I don't know if you can see. Um, not exactly sure how normal that is. Um, I'm crossing my fingers that it's all turbo because we got what's in there. So, took off the air intake. You see oil pulled up in there. Put that down. You look inside the turbo. Uh, can't really see it right there, but oil there too. That's not good. Alright, I did, however, notice the black leak right there dripping onto my motor mount you can see what all right there all right guys quick update um i got the um belt off i got the power steering off uh i got the downpipe and exhaust off um basically just trying to work my way into getting the manifold off so I can um, take the turbo out because this is a very, very tight fit um, to just take those bolts out. Um, I also don't have any way to reach in there and get those bolts out. So I'm just gonna take the whole manifold off and uh, take the turbo off the manifold outside of the car. All right, so as you guys can see, the turbo's off. I have everything disconnected except for the drain line. Um, which is going to be a pain in the butt. I'm just going to try to pull upward and hopefully it slides off. Um, but this is very heavy, so I'm going to struggle for a couple minutes trying to get this out by myself. Um, I'll update you when I get it off. Okay, well that actually only took like 30 seconds. Um, oil drain just slid right off and uh, I had no issues. I just pulled it right up. It was just a little extra heavy, but um, that oil leak from the turbo wasn't terrible let's see what it looks like over here uh yeah you could definitely see something in there ain't doing too good but we'll pull this apart in a little bit okay so this is the ar housing you could see oil residue here and on the turbo you can see the oil right here don't know if that's supposed to move around like that but I assume when it sits inside there it doesn't but I don't know my guess still in all honesty is blown turbo because look at all that oil but this turbo is coming off got the new one in that box we're gonna hope that it fits inside the engine bay okay guys so here's what i found as you can see right there all that liquid coming from underneath there that means the thrust washer um probably went bad um you probably noticed the fins are white you're wondering why that's just because there's not a lot of carbon buildup on e85 um however there is some scratching i don't know if that's just from them um balancing the shafts or what but um i also noticed there was that bolt missing but this turbo was probably just from being strained too hard um you know i don't know uh, i'm gonna go ahead and get it rebuilt and um probably sell it if one of you guys want it feel free to dm me uh on instagram or comment down below and i'll be more than glad to sell it to you after it's rebuilt i wouldn't want to sell you something that's broken um so it is a agp 5757 with a Garrett um, 8.3 AR housing, or sorry, 8.2 AR housing, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I got the turbo out and apart. Um, 
if you look underneath there all that oil underneath that this is not supposed to move by the way um so the thrust washer on the turbo is bad and they uh, i contacted somebody to rebuild it they said it's gonna be about four or five hundred bucks um so i also noticed that bolt was missing but i don't think that's really that big of an issue all right guys so here we have the agp turbo and next to it we have the 6260 well uh sorry garrett 6262 gen 2 uh it's a journal bearing turbo uh Got an 82 AR housing, even though it says AR.70 on the front. Um, you can see it's not too much bigger, but uh, still noticeably bigger. Um, yeah, let's get this in. Okay, guys, I kind of uh, fast forwarded a little bit. Um, as you can see, I have the new 6262 on. Um, tight, or the fitment is super tight. I don't know if you could see, like, right there. It's just barely clearing anywhere i don't think i'll be able to run an intake an air intake i'll probably have to put a turbo screen on it which is going to suck because of all the hot air that it's going to pull off of this but um i don't think it'll affect too much um but yeah the thing just barely fits man i have to um i'm reusing the same oil feed line which uh, I might have to clock it a little bit more that way just because um, it's not pointing straight up um, and then the oil drain uh, so I bought this oil drain line kit for uh, 10 an um, now they gave me this fitting um, but clearly I don't have this to go to the block but what I do have is this little plate Um, that's the same size. However, I'd have to drill that out and then weld this fitting onto there. So I'm going to go give this to my neighbor who's a welder, um, have him weld this on for me. And then we can have a gasket that we can put. This will go to the block. We have the 10 AN hose that will, um, basically, actually I think this is the fitting right here. Yeah, we have this right here. Um, this will go to the block that'll drain oil out the turbo and uh, yeah this is the old one nasty nasty okay so I made my first um, AN fitting uh, this is 10 AN this is going to be the oil drain line off of the turbo um, so I have a 45 bend here and then a straight right here my only problem is, I don't know if you guys can see, but the oil drain is right there towards the bottom and the motor mount's in the way. So I have to pull manifold back off, just to put this on. And then this is going to go to, I don't know if you see, but I had my neighbor Cole weld a fitting, an AN10 fitting onto a plate in that bottom left corner right there. Um for the receiving end of the oil drain. So I kind of like roughly measured this up. I don't know if this is exact or too much or what, but I guess we're gonna find out. So let's go ahead and toss it in. All right, guys. Um, so this is gonna be the last clip for the video. Uh, I did a lot of work off camera. Let me um, let me show you guys what I so did. So first off, I got the correct V-band for the turbo. As you see, that clipped on very nicely. Uh, as well as I did the uh, battery location. So this right here goes through the cabin. You see I remounted the fuse box from here to here now. Uh, I'm gonna clamp this here. This is gonna get mounted over there. This travels through the car, through the panels, all the way back. And if you see over here, I now have the battery here with my ground down there. Uh, I relocated my amp right there and uh, yeah so I gotta go get the exhaust uh, downpipe welded with this v-band now um, which I think I have it somewhere laying around oh right there so I'm gonna cut that flange off weld the v-band on and uh, 
yeah, hopefully we can get this thing started soon. We still gotta work on the fuel system though. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like the video, subscribe down below. Um, leave a comment what you wanna see next, as well as, you know, let me know how hyped you are to see this car start. How much horsepower you think it'll make on the dyno. I'm excited guys, bye.